the formidable robot. As a happy-go-lucky person, I am a big fan of Mickey Mouse, especially since I can easily relate to him since I always try to make people happy just like he does, but sometimes I worry if I ever get too carried away, and I can thank my experience with a strange Mickey Mouse cartoon for that, but to be fair, I'll just explain what happened and not jump to conclusions. So yeah, I have quite an obsession with those old Mickey Mouse cartoons, so I always try to watch them whenever I can. However, it's not an easy task since it's really hard to find them all in one place, and every time I tried to go back to the page that had a cartoon I wanted to watch, it would be gone. So that's why one day, my friend decided to try to find some Mickey Mouse cartoons online, and then burn them onto a DVD so I didn't have to worry about trying to find them the next time I wanted to watch them. Unfortunately, he was only able to find one cartoon. I was disappointed at first, but when I saw the title of the cartoon, I realized it was one I had never seen before. It was called, A Mouse in Need. I was really excited and curious to check out this new cartoon, so my friend downloaded it, burned it onto a DVD, and then gave it to me. I went into the living room and put the DVD into the DVD player. The cartoon opened up with Mickey mowing Minnie's lawn. He was doing pretty well at first, but when he had to mow a spot with really tall grass, he was struggling to push the lawnmower forward. After a few pushes, he slipped, and the lawnmower zoomed off the lawn, causing some grass to go flying off. That's when some of the grass flew past a big pair of shoes that kinda looked like Mickey's, except they weren't. Mickey looked up from the grass and noticed the big pair of shoes that were standing on the sidewalk in front of the lawn. Mickey looked up higher, and that's when he saw that a tall mouse was the one with the shoes, along with having a pair of overalls, but the most distinguishing feature about the tall mouse was his face. He had what looked like the head of a real mouse, along with having an emotionless expression and a blank stare. Mickey got up from the grass and brushed himself off. He then said to the tall mouse, Oh, uh, sorry about that big feller. The tall mouse didn't respond. He just kept looking down at the sidewalk. Mickey became concerned about the tall mouse as he asked. Say, why the long face? The tall mouse still didn't respond. Then Minnie came out of her house and walked up to Mickey as she asked. Mickey, who are you talking to? Mickey pointed to where the tall mouse was, but the tall mouse was gone. Minnie looked and amused. There's no one there. She said as she went back inside. Mickey anxiously looked at the camera as he said. Boy, I sure hope that guy is okay. After that, the cartoon transitioned into another scene, where Mickey was going on an evening stroll through the neighborhood. Eventually, he bumped into the tall mouse. Mickey seemed to be relieved. The tall mouse looked irritated, but Mickey started questioning him anyway. However, when Mickey asked, Where were you? The tall mouse replied with, That's none of your concern. Mickey then tried to apologize to the tall mouse, but the tall mouse just said, Don't worry about me. Mickey tried to think of a way to comfort the tall mouse, but when he was about to speak up, the tall mouse was gone again. At this point, Mickey was becoming more and more concerned about the tall mouse to the point where it felt like some kind of strange obsession. Then he got an idea. Mickey looked at the nearby clock tower and saw that the time was 8.37 at night, which was the exact time that he bumped into the tall mouse. He figured if he came back at that exact time, he would be able to meet the tall mouse again. So the next day, after he and Minnie had dinner, he told her he was going on an evening stroll. Then Mickey dashed out of the house and into the neighborhood. He then waited for the time to turn to 8.37, and once it did, he anxiously waited for the tall mouse to appear, and sure enough, the tall mouse was there, just walking down the empty street. Mickey followed him and started asking him questions. However, the tall mouse slowly became more angry every time Mickey questioned him. Eventually, his face became very angry as he was on the verge of losing his temper. Finally, when Mickey asked him one more question, the tall mouse completely lost his mind. His eyes and mouth became big, he grew two sharp teeth under his snout, and grabbed Mickey by the neck with his giant hands with dagger-like fingers. 
Mickey tried to get himself loose, but the tall mouse's grip was too strong. Mickey started choking as he kept struggling to get himself free. Eventually, Mickey's eyes turned white and he was on the verge of passing out. He desperately kept trying to escape the tall mouse's strong grip. Unfortunately, it was too late, as Mickey passed out due to a lack of oxygen. The tall mouse let go of Mickey and let his body fall to the ground as he walked away, ending the cartoon. I was so confused as to what I just watched. I mean, how could a cartoon like this be so obscure? I took out the DVD and went to give it back to my friend, but I couldn't find him anywhere in the house. I don't know why he would leave the house without telling me, so I decided to go to his house and ask his parents where he was. That's when I saw a man walking by. I think he might be my friend's dad. Maybe he can tell me where my friend went, but he looks a bit upset, so I don't think I should.